Hello, and uh, thank you for uh, viewing into another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. And uh, today I'm going to go over, um, by customer request, this um, Audison AP 8.9 bit. It's a DSP amp combo uh, that's really made for uh, OEM integrations integrations oem integration into a, an oem vehicle so you can take something uh something like this and i th how many channels is one two three four five six seven eight hmm, there it is so it's as the title states really 8.9 uh so we got uh eight output channels uh, that'll go to your front center stage and then you have a sub out channel uh so that's what this is. This is really a DSP amp combo um, that does not work, obviously. So this doesn't turn on at all. There's uh, no life, no LED, no nothing. And uh, today's goal is just let you know, this is take two of this video. I'm sorry, guys, if, if things are off a little bit, but I am running a new camera here. Uh, so I am able to uh, get you guys into that 4K video range that I know nothing about. I don't even know what 4K means. I just know how to fix amps. Well, I can't fix this, but we'll get to that. So this amplifier has uh, two specific shorts um, that, um, as we go through this, I do believe we are going to show the fact that the RCA out for the sub channel got um, had some form of short in the past but uh, but yeah so which way do we want to start let's start with this board first so this is the main board this is a daughter board the daughter board has the PIC on it and the uh, the microcontroller for well the whole thing itself <laughs> for all the processing power here so that's this board and then you have the main board the application board here and this board, I couldn't find any shorts on. It uses a standard power supply. I call standard a t standard TL494 here. Um, that drives these four transistors. Swings this transformer. Gets rectified. So it's a standard power supply. But this 494 has absolutely nothing going on. Which... As soon as I opened this up to diagnose it for the customer, I knew right off the bat, as soon as I saw that the 494 had nothing whatsoever, I knew to go back to, well, this PIC yeah, here. Uh, but we'll get to that. So, no shorts. No shorts anywhere that I found um, on the board. Uh, besides the inductors, of course, we do have several inductors here. And I could not find any shorts across anything except for one one specific item yeah there's no shorts here but if i were to flip this over oh i can't you know why i didn't take the i didn't take the remember this is take two sorry guys um underneath there is a ceramic capacitor that has a Dead short across it uh, but right here there's a muting transistor for the output sub channel here and that uh, capacitor underneath I do believe is going to be a filter capacitor and it's got a short on both sides of that capacitor to ground which tells me that the signal part of this that is shorted to ground um, Let me see if I can find it here. Comes through this resistor right here. Yeah, there it is. Short to ground. Um, this is, uh, just to let you know, I pulled that capacitor and that short was still present. Something happened on the sub channel here during operation that shorted out, which sent a short surge through the circuit going back up to what controls that sub channel. I don't have uh, schematics on this. I am not affiliated with Audison in any way. 
I don't have any parts, prints, nothing. So this is all just from what I have been able to reverse engineer on my own, just using a multimeter. Uh, so that has a dead short. If I were to pull this board back out right here and flipped it over, I could show you there's one very, very small, minute, it's like a whatever size is under an 0806, 0805, 0806, huh, 808. So that MLCC that's shorted, it might even be an MLCC, that ceramic capacitor that has a short was my first indication that there's going to be a problem outside of the amplification, I think, or uh, this part of the board. The sub-channel doesn't have amplification, just your output channels going to your uh, front center stages here. So the sub-channel, when I found that short, told my mind that, hey, it's going to probably be coming straight from the processor. So what I did is I started hunting around on the processor. Let me scoot this out of the way here and pull out this. Now this board here, first I found that there was a, it's labeled as an ESD1 um, that was completely open. So I replaced that um, and I, what was there was like an inductor I would think think it's it's the same component that's right here next to it which reads as a short which tells me it's an inductor or if that's a capacitor it's short <laughs> uh, yeah but your ptc is it's intact it's got a path 1.4 ohm so i know that's good it'll open on a uh, high rise temperature rise so i started moving around and i was moving around the first thing we always check i mean just as habit are these darn ceramic capacitors you know they are just they have a tendency to, to short this one's not shorted but then i moved over to this one and oh lo and behold 4.6 ohms so that led me down the path we call this the rabbit hole uh this capacitor is in relation to that I'm, i think that's a power supply circuit uh, 4.5 ohms across that capacitor, 4.5 ohms, 4.6 ohms across that capacitor, 4.6 ohms across this capacitor, oh, 4.6 ohms across this, uh, that's a, what is that? That is an op amp. Yep, and then uh, this comparator shorted. So the power supply, the power end of this is shorted. I'm assuming the power end. So I pulled everything off this, the comparators, the uh, op amps, the capacitors. I pulled everything off and that st short was still present. I was kind of hoping my fingers were crossed that it wasn't the PIC or the, uh, pro the uh, controller. PIC controller, Sears Logics controller here. And yeah, unfortunately, sure enough, I do read a dead short across many, 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 many pins. This IC has a four ohm short directly across. Who knows? I'd have pulled the data sheet. It's probably its outputs. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, it looks like it's across just numerous output pins. Assuming, assuming. But the thing is, is that four ohm short is probably, so there's, that's gotta be ground. I'm reading zero ohms there. Yeah, 4.6 right next to it. So uh, I would bet money if I were to pull this search logics IC off that that short will go away. But that's kind of a, what's that called? A moot point? Uh, because this is a programmable chip that you can inject your programming in for whatever pro purpose you want this IC to do. So I don't have a way to program a chip. I can get this. I do believe if I remember right, I was able to get this from DigiKey. Uh, yes, the Cirrus Logic CS470448C-CQZ. I can get this, but I have no way of programming it. 
Again, I don't work for, or I am not contracted with Audison. And then at the same time, if this it has a direct short, what's going on with the PIC? PICs, again, another programmable chip. So this board here in particular is what we call declared as not economical to repair. I can't repair this. Um, and I guarantee you if I sent Audison an email, they would probably tell me to go fly a kite because I am independent. <laughs> That's how us independent guys are treated. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe they think our knowledge is rogue. I have no idea. And all these other comparators down here. Oh, no, no, oh, no. These are op amps. These op amps are not shorted across their power. So it's, th this is using a different source for voltage. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. So that is the situation for this Audison. Uh, this AP uh, 8.9-bit DSP slash amplifier it is it has a short in the processor. Sure, I could prove it by pulling that, but what does that gain me? Nothing, because I can't fix it. So that's where we're at on this. Uh, I don't have any videos on Audison. I don't believe. I know I don't have any videos on these DSP slash amplifier combo units. Um, I know they're built kind of the same. I just got done a while ago doing and not doing, I didn't repair it obviously because they had a bad PIC, but Alpine has the same kind of unit, but uses a different, uh, style of IC to drive their output channels. Again, uh, something like that, even Alpine said, I had to go fly a kite. So, um, yeah, so that's where we're at with this. It's, um, it's, it's. It would be repairable. You could replace this board, I do believe, maybe. Uh, but at the same time, this short down here coming for the sub channel would also have to be identified somewhere around here. Because even with this board out, that capacitor was still shorted both sides to ground. Is that by design? I don't know. I didn't reverse engineer it far enough to know. Uh, it comes to a point, if you own a business, you, you know when to stop. So. That's where I'm at. Hopefully the customer gets some good information on this and hopefully other people get information on this on, on what to really check for when you have one of these DSP slash amp combos that just don't work. First thing is why doesn't it have power to power supply? What drives power supplies? Usually a microcontroller. So I was hoping it was something I could do. All these parts are readily available. Um, yeah, all these parts. This is a fully repairable, serviceable board with domestic parts, even probably the PIC, and I know the Sears Logic IC. It's where they get you is in the programming. So thank you guys for watching. Got any questions or comments? Leave them down below that way. Um, I am always happy to help where I can, and I love answering questions, especially helping others. So. Stay safe, guys. Keep your fingers out of the rails. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.